Hey guys, it's Jason here from the Oak Mountain ACOT. We're in a mess. Stick around. Hey guys, if you've been watching our videos, you know that we're always looking for an opportunity to make a buck. And we had one of our customers reach out the other day and ask for more cherry burls for wood turning. So we said that won't be a problem. We know right where we can get some of those on the woodlot. So I came into this area of the woodlot with a backhoe. I did a little bit of stumping and just cleaned up a trail so I could get the B2601 and the cream and timber trailer down in to these black cherry trees. And when I come in yesterday, to get those trees, we had a lot of rain and this trail turned right into soup. And I should have known better and I should have turned around and went home, but I didn't, I went to work. And now my tractor's at the bottom of the hill and it won't come up out of there on its own. So we're on a recovery mission. Here we go. First thing that we'll do is I'll start it up and back it back into the woods and see if I can get the mud off the tires yep. and see if it'll come up out now that things sure. have dried up a little bit. Sure, okay. If it hasn't and I get stuck, I'll stop where I am and we'll hook onto it. Do you have the straps down there? Or are they no, they're right there. Okay, Karen, come on down and we'll show everybody what's going on with this thing. So I had a nice road built and it was all level with a backhoe bucket, but I tried to come up out two or three times and now I've got these three or four inch deep trenches from the tires but the worst thing that has happened is the lugs on the tractor and the trailer have filled up with mud and basically they were very smooth yesterday when I was trying to come up out and that's why I can't get out of here now it's been 24 hours and things have dried up it's been a sunny day today so I'm gonna try and back up a few times and see if the lugs will clear and I'm gonna try once on, on under my own power to see if the machine will come up out if not, we'll have to hook on to it and see if we can get it up out with the winch. So here's what the tires look like right now, guys. See the lugs are completely full of mud. And just about every tire on the machine, including the drives on the trailer, are like that. Okay guys, well that was actually the best 
possible scenario that could have happened. We were in here after supper last night. It was really slippery. There was no way that machine was coming up out. I had to call to get a ride back to the house. We brought in the 414 and the farmy winch to hook onto this and help us out, up out. I put the portable winch on the back of the side-by-side -side and I brought the side-by-side -side with the winch as well. So we came prepared. It was ready to come up out of there. But, uh, you know, I cleaned the lugs up on the tractor today. The, the mud fell right out of them when I backed up. I engaged the trailer drive. I hit the differential on the tractor and we crawled right up out. So let's take a look at the trailer here and uh, show you the kind of mess that we're into. <clears throat> so last night, there was so much mud being picked up off of this trail, it filled this drive full of mud. I'm not happy with that because I'm worried about doing damage to the hydraulics in underneath and uh, maybe ruining a seal or something like that. So I'm going to have to go back and get this wood off and then pressure wash this all out and get that mud out of there. But it even built up mud on top of the frame. And this is a slow unit. Uh, so, you know, that's how sticky that mud was. It was just like a really sticky snow uh, being built up on the machine. And of course the tractor tires here. These are commercial tires, they're not ag tires, and that's what I wanted uh, for low impact on the wood lot. But when you get into mud like this and you fill those lugs up, basically it's just like having a rubber tire roller that you would use on asphalt. So you got to be careful with that. Anyway, very happy with the capability of the machine once things dried up a little bit. Uh, but now we've got a big cleaning job ahead of us. Well, i got a question for you. If, if we had had to hook the 414 on with the winch, have you got a good point to hook to What was your plan there for hooking on the front? So I was thinking about that last night and I don't want to damage equipment. It's all brand new gear. And the best solution I could come up with was to use some of these uh, slings that I had bought with my portable winch. And I was either going to turn the whole machine around down in the woods and hook onto the frame of the back of the trailer so I didn't do damage to that. Or I was going to and I hadn't looked this over, but I was wondering if we raised the bucket up, if I could go right around a front axle with a, a sling on either side and then uh, hook through to a, to a choker chain uh, onto those. But what do you think about that right there? Like that's a pretty heavy brace right there. If your bucket was up a bit. Yeah. And that probably would be, if we raise the bucket up, maybe right around that front piece right there with a couple and slings would, wouldn't be anywhere around and then we'd be right? away from uh, steering yeah. cylinders yeah. yeah so that's probably what we would have done was hook right around here with slings yeah. uh, the slings wouldn't do any damage to even any paint and then we'd hook onto that with the choker chain and the winch and pull and if that winch didn't have enough power we'd put a second winch on it and a third and we would have got it up out okay, yeah well you've got quite a pile of machinery here if I was to add up the dollar amount with the four-wheeler and the the Kubota side by side and of course the old 414, don't forget that, that's a beauty. Okay guys, so it wasn't uh, all a lost cause. As I was down in here getting these cherry burls out, I was looking at this piece of property and I hadn't been in here for a while and there's actually some nice hardwood here to harvest. So we walked the 414 about a kilometer out of the woods to get to this location. So I think I'm going to set up and I'm going to start cutting some hardwood, firewood out of here now. I see some nice white birch down in there, probably eight to 10 inch in diameter. There's a bit of ash, there's a bit of maple, there's a little bit of everything. And uh, you know, as per the model here on the woodlot, we're not going to take the best, we're gonna help those really good trees and those dominant trees and uh, thin away some of the inferior stuff from it just to help them grow even more. Anyway, we'll get a few dollars out of this spot before we go back up into the main woods and uh, Hopefully, we don't have any more issues with mud. That's terrible. Okay, guys. So, like we always say, if you like what you see, see what you like, come on back and see us again. 10-4. We'll see you in the next one, guys. <laughs> <laughs>